Forging a successful career path begins from your foundation. A foundation of quality and professional education. It is a weapon of transformation and a passport to the future. Hipmat's credibility and years of training thousands of professionals in HND. BTEC, BSc, an MBA in the schools of Business and Management Sciences, Engineering and Education with remarkable mentorship from the University of Bamenda for the BTEC and MBA and the University of Boya for the BSc program is second to know. From committed professors and lecturers in classrooms to numerous academic field trips, internships and workshops. HitMath will reform and guide you towards your success. Admissions are now open in our Boya and Douala campuses. Join us. Together, we will build a legacy. HitMath is what it is today because of its excellent and competent teachers. You choosing HitMath will be the perfect place to gain that professionalism that you need to further your educational career. The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology. The University Institute for Professionals. How has uh, the elites from the southwest and northwest uh, region contributed uh, to uh, the current crisis uh, that Cameroon is faced with? Is going to be the focus for our discussion uh, this evening. Also, looking at uh, whether they have what it takes to turn things around. We also are going to be looking at uh, the call by. Kanatumi, who is uh, making a plea to President Paul Bia very briefly uh, to grant amnesty to Cameroonian diaspora and especially those activists involved in uh, separatist activities. Uh, good evening, televiewers. You're welcome to another edition of Prime Hour on my media prime. We are going to be discussing this with our panelists who are already uh, seated here in the studio. Uh, Dr. Nick Angwanyam is in the studio. He is a militant of the CPDM party. He is an educationist uh, par excellence and a social entrepreneur. Good evening, Doctor. We are glad to have you. Oh, thank you very much. Um I must say that I'm here in my capacity as Ning Wanyam. I was not sent by the CPDM. No, party, no, so I just said you are a CPDM militant. <laughs> did not say. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Mm. Thank you. I just wanted to make that clear so that uh, some people don't think that I'm. Well, Professor Boyo will not quarrel over very yeah, soon. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I didn't come here in my cap. I, but I come. I came here in my own personal capacity. Uh, we hope this is a great topic. We hope that we would have a lot to share and learn because. Uh, that we know we've been using a lot of terminology at least, at least we don't even know what we are talking about okay uh we are also in the company of pastor bricky rene uh all the way from bermenda uh from the shiloh ministry yeah okay we're glad uh, to have you yeah good evening everyone and i'm very happy to be part of this program this day and uh, i believe this program will change life okay and we have been having many programs uh, and a movement, which is God Liberation Movement, outreached. And I believe that there will be greater things that will build the okay, nation. Greater things are with uh, Cameroonians, especially okay. as they go through the crisis. We also are in the company of uh, Pastor Chris Avewuse, who is uh, a household name when you talk of uh, Christendom in Douala. We're glad to have you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and good evening to all the viewers of Prime R. Good evening to, to my co-panelists. <coughs> yes, uh, the televiewers are not seeing it. Today, you are not saying that they should cast out demos. They're mm. seeing in a different <laughs> capacity this evening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we are not just... Um, our mission is not just casting of demons mm -hmm. we are uh, out to enlighten many people mm -hmm. uh, with the word of god and uh, not just that i think what, what we're doing here tonight is enlightening cameroonians mm -hmm. uh, we're contributing towards nation building mm -hmm. we are actually uh, put, putting our own contribution to make sure that this nation becomes uh, a better place to be Okay, we are waiting uh, senior barrister Ashwe Manuel who is caught in traffic. We have been talking with him. We pray he comes uh, very soon so that he joins our discussion. I'll start with you, um, Dr. Nick Nguanyam. Uh, what did the 
elites from these two regions feel to do from the onset? Or are you very satisfied with what uh, they have achieved so far? Well, there's a lot that we have to talk about when we have to t to examine what the elites have done or have mm. not done. Mm -hmm. The crimes they have failed to do, I mean, what they have failed to do and what they have uh, done, right. which, which is either right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But probably before we delve into it, why not first define <laughs> what an elite is? Because it's a very, mm. it's a very mixed, uh, how do I say it? It's a concept that is very flu as the francophone thing, concept among flu. Mm. What is, who's an elite? What's an elite? Mm. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> it's very, very important that we take some time off to understand. Who are the elite? Yeah, give it a sociological definition because, you know, <coughs> it's one of those blanket things that many people hide, in, hide under. <coughs> and they hide on there and they do things and they cannot be held accountable because they kind of like pull this thing on them and say elite elite and they get away with a lot of stuff now i have not looked it up in the dictionary but <coughs> this is my own reading about it you could define it your own way but this is my own reading about it i would imagine that an elite or whatever is someone who is enlightened in the community and, f and through that enlightenment, is able to help that community to grow by solving problems and by coming and by rising up to the occasion and making things happen for, the f f for his family, for, 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 for his community, and for the nation. So um, if you were to put the nation and you, know, you stratify the people in any nation, you would have the president over there and then you would have, let me use the, the term, it's not derogatory, derogatory, you would have the common, down he, common man down here, and then 80% of the people, no, let's say 60% would be the ordinary person, common man. Then you have this middle class that is sandwiched in there. And then from this middle class that is sandwiched in there between the president up there and the common man, you have this group of people who pride themselves to be elites because they have seen the light, so to speak. And the president does not live for himself. The president, you know, governs the nation. And by the nation, it involves everybody, including that common man. And you would understand this very well if you've had a business. If you have a business, it means you must have people who you work with. You might be up there as the boss or whatever, but the boss alone doesn't make a business. And you need people to help you make things work. And therefore, out of this group of supposed enlightened people, you know, the president g s uh, sends out a, a hand to, to, to say, please help me with this, be this, be this, be this, or do that. And then, so there's that intermediary group that is supposed to make things happen in the nation. Those are the people we are referring to as the elites. I might be wrong in my definition, but because of some structural things in our nation, because of some evil forces in our nation, this group of people have an evil mindset, and very few of them uh, wake up to the common good concept, because bringing up a country or doing whatever is about common good, and that common good resides on truth and love. But if you're going to have a group of people who have no concept of truth and love and, and, uh, and a desire for common good, then all that they can be doing is out of greed, and more often than not, it's about themselves. So they would come to the common man, the common man will say, this is where the shoe is hurting, and they will say, we are going to tell the president. When they go and see the president, they tell the president a wrong story, something that has nothing to do with what the people told them, yeah. and that's why we've had this confusion. But doctor, some people see uh, the elite uh, class in our society not from the perspective that uh, you are because from what I get from you the elites are considered uh, the political and administrative class but there mm -hmm. is no 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 like, yeah. it's not it's not just political and administrative it's yeah. a group of enlightened people put mm. business people put everybody in there in mm. that bag mm. okay it's it's um, I mean probably that's the that w when we say elite in, the, in, in our Cameroon context, context that's yeah. what most people will be seeing mm -hmm. then take take the enlightened business people who, mm. who have fake contracts and so on and just add to those <laughs> okay <it's>, yeah <laughs> So uh, you think that everybody who calls him or herself uh, anything in the northwest and southwest is fake? No, no. The, the, you you see this thing called the anglophone problem, mm. or or better still, the West Cameroon East Cameroon problem. Mm. That problem has it's 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 a problem that is multi it's it's, it's multifactorial in its in its in its in its in its, in its um uh, what do you how do I put it? 
it was caused by a multifactorial kind of thing, all right? Mm -hmm. But the elites, instead of being a solution and helping, have dug the grave and made it deeper. <laughs> yes, your conception, when they talk of uh, the elites from the southwest, northwest uh, region, and when you look at the crisis that uh, we are now faced with, uh, your appreciation? Uh, actually, elites are supposed to be like torchbearers in every community. Mm people who are like illuminants, mm. people who are civilized, like religious, contributing. Religious, yeah, you people are also part of it now. We, we, yeah, we are part of, we are part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me tell you what has been happening. Because okay. if uh, this problem, which started in a very simple way, mm. got complicated, it is due to, due, due to the dishonesty of the elites. Okay. Because many of them did not give the right report of the situation on ground to the powers that be. They went with so many lies to Yaoundé. And as, so, and as such, Yaoundé did not know the gravity of the situation on ground because their informants were liars and deceptive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what is happening. We have a good number of uh, elites from these two regions mm -hmm. who are not truthful. That's why the problem has remained unsolved up to today. If, we, if they were truthful and honest people, Especially those who, because most of the elites, to be honest, have been politicized. They, are, they have political inclinations. And with these political inclinations, their language, the language that they speak is just political. For instance, in every community, when there is a problem, elites are supposed to show up to champion the cause of solution. But if such, such elites who have been politicized, any time there is a problem in a community, all they come in to do is to see how it can benefit them to see how they can they can get opportunities for themselves and not for the people just like we had the lake news disaster the real victims to today have not really been helped and that's how when there's a disaster in every community elites who are supposed to be there to help these people down there somehow always siphon these things to, for, for, to themselves so the elites in these two regions are very dishonest. Some of them, let me put it this way, are very dishonest and they are not truthful. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Pastor Brike, you live in Bermenda and surely have uh, great interactions with some of the elites uh, from the Northwest. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, I would not like to But you are also part of, of the el elitist class now. <laughs> yeah. How we are people all interact? We, we are all elites. Yes. And uh, from my own point of view, mm. you know, I don't like to sound political. Okay. Because there are some situations that uh, we all count on repentance. Okay. Because I am judging everyone that they have failed, even including the pastors and everyone in the nation. Mm -hmm. Because if we, the spiritual authorities, we are not working with decep deception also, I think the country will not be like this. You will have made a command and, and the yep. term must be still. Not actually a command. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some of the spiritual authorities, they are now uh, political leaders. <laughs> and now, if you are a political leader, at the same time you want to take politics and manipulate in the spiritual field, things can't work that way. We need to repent and do the right things that will make our country better. Mm -hmm. Because it's the, everything in this country, as we are seeing, is deception. And deception is from the devil because it's a lie. When you, you are moving around telling lies and so on, you are not, because I believe leaders are appoint, appointed by God. And leaders that they are appointed by God, they will not work with deception. They will be sincere to their citizens. And are you saying that men of God themselves have not uh, been truthful to Cameroon? Uh, actually, some. Okay. Yes, some. I think that the people that they stand at the front, uh, uh, people to organize meetings and put things in order in the nation. Uh, there are some that have met them one-on-one. -on -one we talk together. And they try to tell me that, no, uh, they are following the, the political principle. And when so, uh, a spiritual authority is telling another spiritual authority, we are following the political system, we are not following what God is saying, it means that we have missed the, 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 the route. We have missed the junction. 
Yeah, but what stops, what stops you who does not see things from that light to make the difference? Well, that is why we have pulled down the strongholds. That is why we have been praying. I think since the beginning of the crisis, we have been in the <laughs> upper chamber. Okay. Of prayer, we okay. pray day and night. The powerhouse. The powerhouse. Okay. And uh, finally, we we have God Liberation Outreach Program, which is a movement, and we are carrying it to see how we can put things in order, and then look for a solution that can be better for our nation. Okay. I want us to look at uh, the elites of the Southwest and Northwest uh, regions, uh, Doctor Nick, uh, from inception, when they left uh, Nigeria. Uh, we're talking about the jungle fortress, the Endelis, the Joas, and, and the like. Uh, did they not do some certain things right at the time? Well, before we delve into that, let me just comment on what uh, the pastor just said here. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a lot from um, from His Eminence, Christian Cardinal Tumi, okay. as far as politics and religion are concerned. Okay. And probably it's good for, when he's talking about political leaders here let me clarify our listeners that you know it doesn't matter how you think what you do there are two kingdoms in this on uh, there are two kingdoms spiritual kingdoms in the world there's god's kingdom and it's the kingdom of the devil right. now a lot of people especially in politics you know they play this card to say that politics is a dirty game and by so doing they tell Christians it's so dirty you cannot be part of it. And the reason they do so is because when Christians or good Muslims come into the political arena, they bring the light. And these are people that are like cockroaches, they don't like light. And therefore, they will try to keep the light away as best as they can. So they play that trump card like, oh, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, a, you are a man of God, you cannot be in politics. Oh, you are a Christian, you cannot be in politics. Leave their dirty baskets to them. But that's not how God designed it. You know, you're supposed to, you are a Christian, and a Christian, you are a pastor, you are a, a priest, you are a cardinal, you are a pope, whatever. You vote. That is, you have the right to vote. You are a citizen. And when you vote people in, you want them to work according to what is right, just, and good for common good. But if people are going to be doing things in a way that is not right, just, and good, you have a right to correct them. It's very, very important. Otherwise, we have given the impression that politics is for some kind of rogue people and people who have a sense of God and so on, who go for holy communion like this and so on, you're not supposed to be seen to be with... No, 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 no. It's not true. I just wanted to say that so that people don't get, get, get uh, uh, um, uh, confused with this. And the Christian, this what this was it eminent Christian Cardinal Tumin taught me. He said, for instance, we need good Muslims. This was somewhere, sometime around December 6th or 8th like that in 2008. He said, in this country called Cameroon, we need good Christians and good Muslims who are God-fearing. So let us forget this thing about pastors, this, 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 this. The, the common denominator is God-fearing because you have pastors who are not God-fearing. So that is the, that, that's how we define them, who are God-fearing, and we can go into that. Who are God-fearing to go into the, that political arena and make sure they have two agendas. One, make sure that the right policies are put in place. And two, make sure that those policies are, policies are, are, um, are, are respected to the letter. That is the, that's, that's the business of a Christian in politics, not this uh, washi washa thing. Can I go on now <laughs> yeah, with the real go question? On, on, okay. Yeah, my question was, I just uh, wanted to make this clarification yeah. so we don't get away with yes, the fact I that I, I want us to look, uh, since the focus is on uh, looking at uh, what our elites have done, yeah. the elites are not starting now. We in the early No, the elites are not starting now. Mm. But uh, while wh when we talk about elite, you are talking about, Pastor, uh, Pastor was saying that people who are enlightened in the community who yes, can bring the light. I'm saying right? that, I'm saying that, let's look at, uh, let's go so back to the elite. To, to start from there and yeah. come up. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are going to start from there and come up. How what, did, what did they fail to do that led us to where we are today? Let's say that, let's say that, Many of them in the early part of their of 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 the republic of I mean 
the Federal Republic of Cameroon or whatever. Mm -hmm. They did their best. Mm -hmm. But in, whether they did their best or not, let us, see, let us make sure we, we keep in mind that they are human beings. Yes. And if you can understand what is going on in America now, the greatest democracy, then you can understand the challenges we've got here. All right? And, you know, one of the, one of the politicians that I respect very much is Led Pa John Gu Foncha. Mm -hmm. I really respect him very much till date because he had Christian values in politics. M might be those Christian values, you know, allowed him to be naive and what was taken for granted. That's another story. But as a person, he meant the best for the people. And if we got cheated or robbed around the way, it was not intentional. Or, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. the, the minds of many people it was not intentional. Okay. But the, the intent, my the intent was yes. The intent was. It's really is the intention that is most important. Mm -hmm. But he. But just like any other situation in life there's no time you're going to have a, even in a small meeting or you're going to have everybody who is good or everybody who is bad mm -hmm. so there were a crop of people at that time they were good people and they were bad people so lying lying in politics didn't start today so there were people who at that time still were caring more about themselves than the common good so we we can only say that uh, over time and up to today they are good people they are good elites and they are bad elites. The bottom line is sometimes the bad ones, they might be closer to power and outweigh the good ones. Yeah, but uh, were they at the time, when we look at uh, what transpired uh, in, uh, in Fumban, uh, there were meetings that took place in, uh, in Yaoundé, would you also think that they were, they were naive? Were they, no, they were, were they complex? No, they were not naive, they were not complex. You see, I could have been throwing tomato peelings at them, but when I went to the major national dialogue mm -hmm. and saw how <laughs> dialogues are held in Cameroon, <laughs> then I, I respected them. They got they, they went to Fuman and got out more than we got from the major national dialogue. <laughs> I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. In the major national dialogue, you know, today we have more professors, more doctors, and more what have you, and we all went to Yaoundé today. And then drank champagne and came back. So, <laughs> Parfoncha, I respect you. May your spirit rest in peace. You did the best you could. But, you know, the intention of the major national dialogue, I'm, 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 I'm trying to deal with what people were saying because it's current. Mm. Translate what happened to the major national dialogue, but then translate it back to 1970, mm. 61 or whatever. Considering their level of education, yeah, education and mm. so on. So, and to really understand what has been going on, which is like a smoke screen, we've got to listen to His Excellency President Paul Bia speaking to Mr. Mo Ibrahim in Paris, where he clearly tells the whole world that the idea had always been for the Francophone component of the nation to, to, to squeeze the necks of Anglophones so that they become Francophones. Did you hear that? Assimilate. Assimilation, that's marginalization and assimilation. I'm not the one who said it. Actually, I used to think, I used to dream that thing in my dream, thinking was the truth. But this time around, the president came up himself and said it that that, that was the agenda, and that it was time to leave the anglophones alone. But unfortunately, he is making this statement a couple of months after the major national dialogue had taken place. So wh what went on during the major national dialogue? The major national dialogue was taking place in a season. You know, the pastors they understand what we mean by seasons. There was a season, and the season that preceded that President Paul Bia's tenure was the season where, they, where, where they, the watch word was marginalization and assimilation. So when the major national dialogue is taking place, whoever was at the table or pulling strings and so on, make sure that at the end of the day you rope these people better. Don't let them go. And, or don't give them breathing space. So that's why whatever came out of the major national dialogue doesn't seem to be solving the West Cameroon East Cameroon problem. Okay. And therefore, when the president speaks, it's t that's why we need another dialogue now to go to the new dialogue in a new mind frame, in a new season. Okay. Uh, look at the elites we have today and uh, the functions, the early uh, this. How would you appreciate uh, them, their approach to wanting to safeguard the interest of um, Anglophones? Uh, actually, like uh, Dr. Nick said, mm -hmm. the elites of in those days, let me put it this way, got better than our elites today. Uh, it's true Think that, so? Yes, it's true that the one of the elites I actually respect is uh, Mr. Joa. <laughs> because Augustine he, he, yes, he actually saw that the two uh, the, the, the choices that we had nothing good was to come out of it. Mm -hmm. So he was encouraging 
encouraging the people to press forward for their own independence. You get it? Mm -hmm. He saw that if we join Nigeria, we're going to have problems still. And he also saw that if we join La Republic, the Cameroon, then we'll still have problems. So he was pressing for independence. And I'm sure it should be celebrated even in these regions today because looking at the problems that are on ground, it shows that either sides were kind of dangerous to, to them then. So somehow he foresaw, we could call him a visionary because he saw what others did not see. And uh, to be honest, I asked some questions to know he, some, uh, some part of the history, especially the meeting in Fumban. And it, it, was, it was so much dancing and drinking of champagne. There is a the champagne. There is a kind of drink which uh, I got the name. It's just that it's off my mind. Why, why, why do you think it is, it is the drinking of uh, Fumban? Uh, he, you were, somebody you, told me that that wine was specially chosen for that occasion. Mm. And it was a kind of wine that when you drink, you, 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 it takes you off somehow. And you, you get into the, 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 the ambience and you just begin to enjoy yourself you know it, it's like it reduces your reasoning ability and and fumban has very beautiful ladies and fumban has very beautiful ladies we saw in pictures how uh, jungle <laughs> Foncha was dancing with a tall lady uh, and you could see that they were so much carried by the ambience and mm. somehow it might have deviated them from uh, looking at the right uh, the, the things they were to tackle and the things they were to Yes, but after Fumban, they had meetings in Yaoundé. Eh? They had other meetings. And the one thing I saw too with uh, Mr. John Gukfoncha, of course, he did a very great job. You know, uh, I'm s I saw that some of them were tired. They were like, they wanted to belong to something bigger. Mm. You know, they were like, this we are small this way. Let's leave Bamenda. We could get to Yaoundé and be and be part of something bigger. And they preferred uh, La Republic because it wouldn't be as big as Nigeria because they considered Nigeria like an ocean. So they preferred this other side so that they can also have a part to play. So somehow there was selfishness in those people because they really wanted to be in control of affairs. <laughs> so somehow that is not different from uh, the elites we have today because the elites we have today are people of interest and not people of passion who want to see the common man better. Mm -hmm. So if we, we need to see that there is something I've been thinking about, yeah. we need to pack all the elites, in fact, the, the, the political elites, let me, put, let me be clear, because somehow in the other domains, we've seen that the elites, some of them like pastors, we've been seeing their contribution uh, in, different, in, in business, we've been seeing businessmen also uh, contributing positively yeah. to making life better for the people, but the political elites are failures. Okay, and I really think we should put them aside. The man of God. Some people quote to me that I should bring do a program for you, but that you people are chopping, and Christians are not also chopping. Oh, that, that's uh, that's their opinion. Those are fake people. Those, those are, those are no, detra everybody. They are, detra they are detractors. Everybody's opinion <laughs> concerns him. <laughs> uh, okay, but at least at least men of God are praying. They are no, helping. No, a, a pastor mm. who is doing his job should be fine. <laughs> if I'm, if I pray for you and you're blessed, and you, and I, if I've taught you to be blessed, mm -hmm. if you're blessed, it's natural that you look at, at me. Yes, okay. And okay. You, you extend a hand mm -hmm. of blessing to me too, because it's two way. The Bible, not says, that, way. The Bible says that we he, don't he, force he, the people to take <laughs> the money. We, we teach them, we preach, and they are seeing us as relevant people to them. So it's but no matter that you appreciate somebody who has been. The Bible says that he will receive a prophet. Uh, he who gives a cup of water to a prophet receives yeah. the prophet's reward. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so we carry rewards. Even you here talking, you could give me an offering after this. Uh, you. <laughs> but yeah, you have been you have been blessing me all the time. <laughs> um, yes, let's look at uh, what our elites in the southwest and northwest regions have been able to do because we are talking about a crisis. Uh, that uh, is taking away many lives and most of uh, those uh, dying are young people. I want us to look at what they have done to ensure uh, the employment or job creation uh, uh, possibilities in these two regions, that is to get the young people gainfully occupied. You know, 
the challenges or well, we, we consider that is just uh, the sole responsibility of the state no not actually mm. you know everyone we need to be independent mm. when you depend on the government and when the government don't give you a job you know that you you, you will not be happy mm -hmm. but first we need to be independent mm -hmm. before now we are going forward to see that the government offer us a job mm. that is the first thing and I, I don't want to like enter into the boiling pot because there are many things in this nation that you know the enemy has have taken advantage okay because the bible says in second corinthians 2 11 <laughs> that uh, we are not ignorance of the devices of the enemy lest they gain advantage and now it means that we have been ignorance of the devices of the enemy and the enemy have gained advantage over us in this nation yes it means that we as Cameroonians, as as the Cameroonians that are in their country, we need to do our best to see that we find peace and we manage our country. Okay, we have to make sure. And uh, for us spiritual authorities, mm -hmm. we are trying to see what we can do to see that we suppress the hand of the enemy. That's why we are praying every day, making sure that we pray and we pray. At times when we pray, they say we are shouting. We are calling on God. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know, no, it's not like he does not have ears. There's a certain, you know, you, 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 yeah, when you are in bondage, you, you cry. You are crying for Cameroon. We are crying for Cameroon and you see, you see the issue, you see Hannah. Hannah mm -hmm. cried to God. Mm -hmm. Even lamentation. Lamentation. You know, lamentation is a prophet who was crying. A crying that, prophet. That's mm -hmm. true. Yes, Esther fasted. Faster than for free. the people. For the people. Okay. We have just been joined by <laughs> <laughs> Senior Vice Ashu Emmanuel. Senior Vice, we are glad to have you with us. So we thank God you were able to brief the the traffic. We are looking at uh, what our elites have been doing. You are an elite from the Southwest and Northwest region. Uh, would you be proud of what uh, you all of us have done for our regions? Uh, thank you. Good evening, <laughs> Leo, Mr. Liu. Yes. Dr. Gwanyam, man of God, <laughs> and the beautiful <laughs> audience out there. Well, um, to be very objective, you see, I wasn't proud of the contribution of our elites when this uh, crisis broke. broke okay. up Because they were the very ones who came out to say, I'll cite somebody who knew very well who said, there was no different problem. I saw our senators take to the streets in Yaoundé with great rally on their chest to march and ask the soldiers be sent to come kill us. We saw parliamentarians, politicians organizing press conferences to call on the government to send the army to come kill their own brothers. Um, that was the bitter part because they, they, they played their belly politics and wanted their, their boss to see that they were working well. Now, after the war has erupted, the two cubes of uh, sugar refused to be dissolved in the bucket of water. All of them are now having a rethink. And I think that if you look at the economy of our regions, you'll see that if not of the elites, we have one prominent one here who is doing very well. I mean, who is uh, making us proud in the domain of education. If not of the early elites, the government itself has declared our regions economically Disaster, bank yeah. bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So it is the elites that are sustaining these regions. And we only, um, well, more so because <laughs> nobody is paying any taxes anywhere. Electricity bills uh, have been sent to the graveyard. And uh, you see, it's an economic no man's zone. So there is every reason for business to thrive in the, in the, on the days when it can thrive and in the areas where it can thrive. But you have to, we have to also see that there is a, a great deal of um, war economy that has come up, that's erupted because <coughs> most of the produce, the farm produce, is no longer sold regularly. It is taking uh, irregular routes to Nigeria and other countries. But I think I have to commend the elites this time around for 
keeping the, our economy alive. Because as you know, the parastatals are down. Yeah, but, but cities, what category of elites are you say are you thanking here? Is it the political administrative elites or no, 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 the no, no, business no, no. The class? Civil society business class elites. Because oh. the politicians, you we all see what they are doing. There are very few. There are very few like uh, my brother here who will st stand up and say, Look, I am seeing that this one is black. It should be black. Mm -hmm. It should be painted black and not called white. There are very few, but there are others who still believe that by licking the licking the boots of uh, the people who are in, the, in power, they will get a piece of cake. And I think that that doesn't help us. We should stand up and say, this is good and this is bad. No matter what. You see, when I say my thing, if you don't, you don't agree with me, I have said it. I have said it. Whether you, you agree or not. Last time I will say, I said, look, these are our elites who are abroad, who are funding the war and giving instructions. They are fighting each other. They should come to terms with themselves and stop fighting and stop killing each other. They took on me. Oh, 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 you're taking money. Master, <laughs> do I look like somebody who needs money from the maybe, government? Maybe, maybe you, you, you influence uh, Thibault Nagy's uh, call. No, I came, I came after him. Mm -hmm. Because that day we here were commenting on Thibault Nagy's comment. Mm -hmm. But when I, I was on Canal Day, mm -hmm. it was before him. Yes. You, you want already? Uh, I don't know what I don't you were, you were described. I want, yes, I want that, that they should come together. But I see, it is something normal. If they come together, it is a plus. I don't I don't feel good when I hear somebody like Eric Tato taking on a comment. Thief, rook. How? Massa. Oh, publicly on the social media or television. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not nice. Mm -hmm. I know I will take on Siziku, insult him. And please come to terms. If you cannot even form one group, stop insulting each other, stop fighting. Stop fighting each other. And then focus on what they are doing. That gives confidence to the people. But you fight each other. Me as a politician, I tell you, it will be, to be a referendum, I'll tell my people, look, vote, choose wisely. Okay. Choose wisely. Uh, yes. Which I will tell my people, choose wisely. Don't leave Frepan to enter fire. Because, <laughs> like I said last time, if you have to continue fighting, and total independence is given, are you sure you, shall, you enjoy it? Are you sure? So it is a nice thing for us who are here to tell our brothers who are abroad, please come together. If you can look at it, stop attacking each other, stop insulting each other, stop giving instructions to your supporters down here to be killing each other. You see, that's the thing. And that is the, that is the reason why I say I will uh, uh, support the people down on Ground Zero who are sustaining the, 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 the society because without them, you don't count on the government. Who government will not create any job. Okay, it is people, people, people down like, there. People like uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam. Yes, uh, doctor, let's look at this I spoke with uh, I've spoken with some historians who tell me that uh, the divide uh, that we find in the, within the, the political elite of Cameroon today is not new because uh, he says that in the days of Ahijo, we find uh, elites who go to meet Ahijo, which hunt others because they wanted favors, and then and it continues today. That's right. That's right. That's a very interesting angle that you are taking on there, and it's all as uh, that that story is as old as humanity itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, Judas Iscariot did the same thing, so it's Good as old. Yes, mm -hmm. when 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 Moses, <laughs> 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 when Moses, when Moses killed that Egyptian, you remember, I mean that that Egyptian. You know what happened to him? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's humanity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Told, yeah. So before i i get lost into this because i always like to give a teaching let me go on what uh, pastor Buike. yes Buike just said a moment ago and i uh, you know there is there is there's is something that i'm going to say the bible says that we should pray as if everything depended on prayer and that we should also work as if everything depends on work and it's not a scripture all right whatever <coughs> Common sense tells us that sense God's wisdom, does divine does wisdom. No, but does the Bible not say that whatever your hand finds to do, you should do it as if you are? Don't worry, let it. That's a distraction. Let's let's get this going. I'm trying. I'm that's trying to. What wait. Whatever. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm here on this. We <laughs> Before we started this program, let me tell our auditors, you know, the, all these pastors, I said I should bring a bunch of them, let's talk about this thing, because many of them deceive the public. <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 wait. 
No. You see? You've wait, please. Okay, okay, it's not a scripture. Wait, wait. No, wait, you okay. take, wait, no, no, wait, no, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, 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 to have dominion and God created us to worship him to worship him to praise him to work and to multiply that's why God created us God did not create us for miracles and that is the problem we're having you see Africa is very poor because people just go and pray 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 expect no, things no, to no, change no, no. we must Please pray and work something. it's very important I'm, I'm just saying this because it's very very important and why <laughs> The men of God are praying. When you pray, you have to get up and find out what is it that is going on in the community. Why are people behaving the way they are doing? And try to correct that. Now, but that was just an aside. Yes. Let me answer your question. Then we can, you can argue yes. afterwards. Let the, me divide, the, divide, the, 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 the divide. Mm -hmm. Refresh my mind. And yes. my I'm mistake. saying that uh, today we are talking about Anglophones who are in uh, the, only ang the, the Anglophone crisis is actually ongoing. He raised the issue that when uh, the crisis started. We saw Anglophone MPs, senators who went uh, marching in Yaoundé. And then there was a call from the SDF for all the MPs to come together across the board and look into uh, the issues. But people have been working rather on party lines and uh, the divide is there. And That's I, right. And, and I took you back to the days of the front Charles the Juas, where uh, two historians have told me that even in the days of Ahijo, people would silently go to to meet a hijo to yes that to is which hunt the other that is true and the witch hunting has continued till today and it's even it's even become worse now to be able to understand what is going on you have to understand why human beings behave the way they do and because i've been thinking about these problems for a long time you know i have come to some conclusions that are very very important like you have heard me say before the biggest problem with Cameroonians and Africans is that we don't understand problems. Next thing is that we don't know how to solve problems. And the third thing is that we don't know how to create wealth. And when you look at it very carefully, all these problems emanate from the fact that our educational system is very poor. We go to universities, we study subjects and so on, we come out, and then, like pa Pastor was saying here, the government should give you a job. Government is giving nobody no job. I think it should be very clear. Government is giving nobody no job. The civil service has more than 300,000 people. That's already too much. And many of them don't have work to do. But rather, it's the private sector that is supposed to generate this wealth. And you're supposed to get the skills to be able to make things happen. And if we are not having the skills to be able to make things happen, it's because we are not doing things right. And then you will now pray, 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 looking for miracles and financial breakthroughs. It doesn't happen. Now, listen. So many of these, many of these so-called politicians are fair men. What do they do? <laughs> they, they look for a line. And then when they can, they, when they can put their, their lips on one of those um, mamelongs and they're and they're, and they're sucking milk, you know, you don't come and disturb them when they're sucking their milk. And they will blackmail you so that they can keep sucking the milk. Am I correct, Barrister? You're yes, very correct, that is what is happening. And listen to many of these people who keep shouting and praising the president from morning to evening. In fact, the pre let me watch me. The president does not need all those your praises. The president needs you to work. And if you, if, if you think that you can praise the president more than I don't know who, go check out how many of those praise singers are in prison. He puts you there to do a job, to help Cameroonians. He doesn't put you there to be praising him. And then if you really want to support him, do the job. So instead of people doing jobs, because they don't have the capacities to do jobs, because they don't yes. understand problems, know how to solve problems, because that's the only way. You only create wealth by solving problems. Since you don't, you have not learned all of this. You, are, you look for a cheap way of doing it, having a government job, having an appointment, having, I don't know what, being, being the director general of I know no no what, or the, the president, whatever. This is just ways of sucking money and doing nothing, no. have nothing to offer, which means those people, though, they boost their ego with this thing. If you take them from that job, they crash to the floor, and nobody wants to crash because they have, they have nothing else that, that sustains them. It's just this thing, by appointment, appointment, you are there, but there is nothing that holds you in the air. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is the problem, and they will stick to it as best as they can and make sure no one else comes to, to take them out of that position, and that's why there's so much blackmail. Did, I make, did it make some sense? Okay. Uh, everybody wants to protect their interests. Now, uh, can... Our elites, the elites we have now, 
can they change the situation? Can they uh, turn the situation around? Or we are just so helpless, dependent solely on uh, the government? Okay, uh, before I say that, let me go back. Uh, I was saying, I'm, I'm a man of God mm. and I'm a seasoned preacher. Mm. I've preached the word of God. This is getting to two decades. Mm. And when I hear a uh, doctor saying, the Bible says, when you are quoting the Bible, they are scriptures. Mm -hmm. If they ask you what where in the Bible is that word coming from, you should be able to be born. So that you can say that from what we have read, we understand. You get it? That's or right. maybe you can say that um, from common sense, like he later, he, that's what he used, which is okay with that. What, what I want to say is that the elites have a role to play. And if they change their game, because they, they can be able to bring a change in this situation. If they become honest, because most of them have been dishonest, they have been telling lies. So if they can cease from telling lies, to start speaking the truth, mm -hmm. because it is the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. It is only when we speak the truth that we bring in light the situation and of course yes. darkness is going to disappear mm. so you have to understand that people need to know, know the truth and if the elites wants to see this if the elite wants a change they should start speaking the truth mm. that's how that change will come okay uh do you believe that the elites that we have political administrative uh, civil society elites that we have from the southwest and northwest region can they change the game Anyway. They, they can only change it when they repent. Okay. We need repentance. That is the first thing. They have to give their lives to Christ. Yeah, you repent from the, the bad behaviors, deception. You understand? Mm. Deception. Because if you are not there to deceive people, you are there to, I mean, do the right things to the people. And now the Bible says in Matthew 5 verse 8, and now he says, Blessed is the pure in heart. And now he says that blessed is the peacemakers. Are you getting me? When you, you, you want to be blessed, you see, this country is not blessed now. When we all we will repent, this country will be blessed. We are not blessed. That's why we are having all these crises. We need to have a pure heart and make peace. That's what will build our country. And the only peace can come from God and from the spiritual authorities. I don't think that without us, there will be a solution in this nation. Nothing. Without the men of God? Yeah. Uh, well, what are you people waiting for? We are already working out things. And uh, we are trying to see that, uh, I mean, let there be a change in our nation. So and that is why we are meeting the... Do you find the contribution of pastors? Do, do you know what, what, what would have been, you know what would have been happening on ground if the pastors or the men of God were not praying? Maybe things would have been worse. worse. Should we just so stay at the level of the prayer? That's why he's saying there is a, there are, there are a lot of things that okay, you've prayed for four years. God are doing. No, you don't just pray and sit and fold your arms. Okay, we are you, taking. We, we, why, that's why we're here. Are we praying here? We're talking. We are talking. <coughs> Actually, we're contributing. We're not, we're not praying here. We, on this platform. But we are not praying now. We are talking. <laughs> we are making so points that they make sense. Yes, and I think many people are watching us here. Mm. And the, the government authorities, the people, the elites, they are also, also seeing us talking, contributing. But my question stands here. Do you think, can okay, you say for this, this elites yes. to turn things around, they need to repent, give their lives to Christ? Yes, everyone. Not only the elite. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that they are around the elite. The elites can say the right thing. They will now come deceive us also. But most, of, now, this, most of these elites... Curiously, uh, Dr. Nick, most of these elites are your friends here. Uh, they, they patronize you. They come to you people every day. It's true. No, 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 no. They, don't, call, they don't patronize us. We are not doing We teach them. We we teach them. Sin offerings. <laughs> we do, you said juicy offerings. Sin offerings. <laughs> it's not a. No, 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 he's no, no, no. a pastor and he has been some juicy offerings. <laughs> okay. okay um, uh, senior barrister. 
Now, what should be the strategy if if, uh, if he says they should repent, but even if they were to repent, they still need action. What should be the strategy for the elites from the southwest and northwest region to be able to make an impact? Well, uh, Mr. Leo, we have to um, take note that the people are no longer uh, stupid. Mm -hmm. Because some people used to think that the people, the population is stupid. They're no longer stupid. They are very, very alert. Mm -hmm. And nobody can just get up and talk anything and expect people to swallow it. So Pe People can easily decipher whether uh, it's a yes. drama or not. So, you mm -hmm. see, our elites, I, I want to make a distinction between the elites who are in government mm -hmm. and the elites who are in the civil society. Mm -hmm. You see, those in government know that they have been vomited. They know it very well, that the population has vomited them because... They are serving somebody whom the population is no longer looking with good eyes. So they know that whatever they say, nobody will believe. Each time that the government says, okay, one, two minutes, I'll go down to the field. What is it? What feedback do you get? People say, ha, ah, these very people who deny the existence of the problem, they are the ones being sent. These ones who are Dimabola Dima politicians are the ones who are being sent. The people are tired of those edits in government and want a new breed. Well, you tell me that many don't want they want their own state they don't want any, their elites to go to that government anymore but the truth is that the elites that we have in government many of them have been vomited and whatever they say doesn't go down the stomach of any person so you want to have credible elites mm -hmm. people who can stand and talk like my brother here he is of cpdm but he is of a branch of cpdm that is that does not that is clean that means that uh, Cause black black. What guarantees? Please. <laughs> I'm talking about the man sitting in front of me. Okay. Uh, he is the one to give you guarantees, not me. <laughs> 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 we have seen him talk about confederation here. Yeah. That is not civilian language. Yeah. You see? But uh, it, it's not an edit like him. An edit like him who is who stands neutral. Mm -hmm. I mean he is credible. There are others who continue to say, hey, there is no anglophone problem. Although all the proofs are there. Although Mr. Bia himself has said yes, there is. Well, no, no wonder because in the past he has always taken positions against his party, his militants. So the elites who are not in government are those that are credible. And I want to say that for those of us who are not in government to, to remain credible, we should not also try to serve the people in power. Because if we want to start licking boots, Will, be, will not be different from those who are there. I I think I remember some professor that, that said somewhere that Southern Cameroon had never been a state. Another one who was a doctor in doctor also said a similar thing. And I put my hands on the head and said, wonderful. What type of thing is this? That people will say that the state that was the first African state to have a democratically elected government was never a state. Here's something. Let me look at lies destined just to look for positions so you see the elites well i don't i will not talk of repentance i think that they should go towards credibility you see if if we go towards credibility you make your point make sure that that point is not supported by any gains you have any personal gains like any person when i say my team people say he has taken money from cpd the next day or the day after they will realize that stupidity because they will see that I am a person who never takes a dime from anybody. I speak my mind. If something is good, I say this is good. If it's bad, I say it's bad. Without fearing any person's eyes. You are all human beings. So you don't fear anybody because you want a favor. You Please. fear God. You fear God. Fear, fear God. Fear God. Not, not human beings. Yes. So I think that our elites should learn to be honest to serve the people's interest, serve the people's interest. They should be selfless. They should not. They should stop seeking political or economic gain. Because so long as you want to seek gain in what you are doing, whatever you say will be self-serving narrative, and it will not go down with the people. So I think that if we want our elites to be a game changer in this thing. In this crisis okay they should learn to be credible to be selfless and uh, you see to act in the interest of the 
common man okay. who is suffering in the fields. Mr. Leo, your, your topic is timely. Can you increase the volume? Because most of our elites have sold their birthright because of money and have even forgotten about the welfare of their children. Shame. Martha, Auntie Martha is uh, writing from from Kumba. Good evening to you, Auntie Martha. Uh, good evening, my media prime. Please give us sound. Sound. We are following the program and we love it much. It's powerful, but we can't get the pastors. No sound. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I hope it has been fixed there. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Um, Matthew, writing from Bafusam. Good evening to you, Matthew. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Desmond Eze. Please help me talk to Barrister Emmanuel. That I would like to talk with him privately. Okay, uh, just call me after the program and uh, I will send you by star's number. Good evening, Mr. Leo. It's Cletus from Limbe. Mr. Leo, we need to understand that our duties is to pray and leave the rest for God, for the work of God is not by power nor by might. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mr. Liu and panelists for all the good points. Yes, the government must not employ everyone, but in Cameroon, the government destroys all the companies that can employ citizens. What a government we have. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm. It's okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Nick. I want us to look at, he raised the issue of uh, that uh, there is no trust. There's no trust in the elite. Uh, there's no trust in what the government is saying. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. This is Justice Longang from Edea. Special greetings to Dr. Nick for being real. He is a realist at the Bible and pragmatism is what the test of time is yet to reveal. As for the elites, nothing good can come out from them. The belief in self-interest rather than general interest and won't want to bite the finger that fits them. Youth should not find a purpose in Christ because many of us are running after miracles and have forgotten to walk and create wealth, not through Christians' offerings. Okay, How do we build trust between the population and the elite? How do we build trust between the population mm. and How the do we elites? reconcile them? Because you said they have been vomited now. Yeah. Mm. You know, like I was telling you before, I have learned a lot uh, sitting at the feet of his eminence, Christian Cardinal Tumi. And he gave us six, six points that we must keep in mind if we want to succeed in anything. If we want to succeed in anything, it says anything. They are just general key principles. Number one, you must like work very important number two you must like work that is well done that's called excellence number three you must be honest you must have intellectual honesty you must be honest and another word for honest is that you must be truthful number four you must have self-discipline self-discipline there's a book I, have, I read a lot of books and there's this other book um, there is no excuse by Brian Tracy and he says, and he gives, it, he's, he, he comes, he says there's 1,000, you can have 1,001 excuses for, for, for failing or for, doing, for not doing something. But a thousand of those excuses have the weight of one. And that one most important thing is self-discipline. If you don't have self-discipline, you are in and out. It, you can't get anywhere without self-discipline. And you know we don't have it. Number four, five. five, you must pray. You must pray to your God. You must worship and praise him. It's very important. And you would, you would understand why. If I say one or two other statements. And number six, we must respect Mother Earth. Mother Earth is the environment. It's from Mother Earth that everything comes. And if you destroy Mother Earth, you destroy yourself. You're knifing yourself if you destroy Mother Earth. Doctor, I'm asking about reconciling uh, yes, our leaders and... Uh, yes, I'm, I'm and giving you principles mm -hmm. because it is about them aligning to these principles. It's not about telling any story or any dialogue. Okay. So if you're going to... If you're going to and, and, and you see, I'm, I'm taking the time to say it because we have a lot of elites that are going to be coming from that crowd. Uh, I mean, the people that are listening to us. And 
when I when I mention this thing, check out all those people whom you call Ellis and find out whether they have this element. Then you will understand why they lie. If they are lying, they are in and out. And if if they must change, you must you must go through a checklist and find out whether they have these things that we are talking about. It's very very important. And what we call truth. To understand what truth is is, 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 is is very complex, and I hope my pastors here would help me. There is nothing that you can achieve if you lack two things. If you lack truth and you lack love. If you lack truth and you lack love, you are not going anywhere. That's the bottom line. Why is it so? It's so, number one, because it is the, it's God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who made heaven and earth that controls everything. You could think otherwise it's your problem, but he's the one who controls everything, and you must understand his nature. God is love. God is life, and so we must respect life. So all those people killing people with Odeshi, God is not with you. Whether you are military or you're on the other side killing people, that's not God's wish. You don't respect life. God is love. God is life. God is truth. 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 God is soul. God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is infinite intelligence, that total wisdom that created the world. God is principle, so you must work on principles. So if these people don't have these things, forget. They can tell you anything. Yeah. And if they want to, they must align to these things, otherwise yeah, they're liars. God, the man of God said uh, that they should repent. What if they repent? How do no, they... No, if the repentance is between them and their God. And once you repent, we see the fruit of the repentance that these things that I'm naming, would their language would change. Mm. They will be loving. They will protect, preserve life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. But uh, do, you, do you think that there is a clear divide between the elites and the population now? Of course. That is, yeah, uh, I, the I, elites, I, I uh, you are an MP. I have been declared personal non grata by the population. No. In fact, I don't I, think I, that... I want, I want us to yeah. look at day-to-day -day life, uh, be, uh, even before this crisis. When you look at how the elites lived in the communities, did they live among the people? Did let they? Me, let mm. me say something. Mm. It will be difficult for such elites to walk free, unguarded, in the streets on the streets of Bamenda or any village. Before Bamenda. before the crisis, yeah. Now. No, I'm talking before the crisis. Were they really living with the people? Because uh, oh, when when I announced when I announced this topic, five persons wrote to me. They say, uh, for the past ten years, anytime somebody became an MP in the community he builds a very beautiful house, raises a tall gate, and yeah. then excludes themselves from the society. The truth is that if we have people of interest, mm -hmm. who, uh, like Barrister talked about belly politics, <laughs> <laughs> if you are doing politics for your stomach, mm -hmm. it means you first before the people. And if you are standing for yourself and not for the people, it, won't be, it will not be easy to walk along with the people. Mm -hmm. Because the people are looking for somebody who can stand for them. Mm -hmm. Somebody who can solve their problems. Mm -hmm. Somebody that they, they, that they can lean on. Not somebody who is fighting for himself. And that's the true what has been going on. Because the elites are looking for advantages and benefits that is for them, not for the people. For instance, I think the doctor also said something. It's like they are they are they are like uh, dragging some milk and as they are doing that they don't want anybody to kind of shake them from that from that so they they, they want to concentrate to get what they want to they are, what they are looking for so that's why the people don't trust the elites and the people don't want to see them yes but how do we reconcile now the, the pastor was saying something he talked about repentance what is repentance repentance is simply a change of heart mm -hmm. change of mind that is and that can only happen when you acknowledge that you were on the wrong path so the elites need to ask for forgiveness from the people that we went we made a mistake if they cannot acknowledge the fact that they were wrong then they can't be able to correct their mistake because the same mind in which you make an error you need another mind to correct that error you cannot correct that error having that same state of mind so the, the elite needs a change of mind. And that change of mind has to do with this has to start with them acknowledging the fact that they went wrong. They they told lies. They said things that were not tr truthful. So that's the starting point. If they want to be credible, they must follow that path. They must repent. Become people who are objective, become people who are truthful. That's how they will bring change. And the people and that's how the people will start believing again. 
in them. But my, I, will have, I will have one uh, thing which I want to suggest, which I'm suggesting, that all those who are in politics in the Northwest, before this Anglophone crisis, should be put in the garage. They should pack them aside. I clap for you. And <coughs> if they pack them aside, look for people who are not having anything to do in politics before this thing actually erupted. We should look for new minds to manage affairs in these regions. If we do that, I can tell you that uh, we're going to have a better, uh, a better community. Okay. You think so too that uh, there is need for a rebirth of the uh, political and administrative class in the southwest and northwest region? No, not actually, because uh, what we need is the change of attitude. Okay. Because uh, from my own point of view, I mm. see that this situation is a spiritual confusion. Okay. That need God divine intervention and direction. And now, if we change the class of people, we don't know the people. We we are not the one appointing. Them. It's gone. They appoint them actually. They appoint them from the ministry, mm -hmm. and they put them at that position. You don't know the mindset they will come with. You don't know whether they will only, ch I mean, interchange them from another region to uh, to the other region. Are you getting me? So now the point here is that first, everybody in this country we have seen against God. We need to repent. Change of attitude. We need a change of attitude. And the way we engage into solving our problems. Because the actual, the real problem that we are facing today is because deception, unforgiveness, and you feel that I'm, I am this, I am this. When we take more of our position, we take wrong decisions, it creates more confusion. Mm -hmm. And now when we come to repentance, is the only way. And that repentance can only come when they recognize the spiritual authorities that they can tell them this is this. They can tell them the truth and they accept the truth that that is the truth. Because they said, the Bible says that you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. It means that if you don't know the truth, the Bible still says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge, because of ignorance. And it says in John 15 verse uh, 7, it says, if you abide in me and my word in you, you will ask anything in my name, you shall receive it. Mm -hmm. okay. And now we are we are asking for peace. It means we need to go back to God to abide to Him. Uh, I was uh, I want us to look at the this issue of uh, reconciling the elites, the situation of the elites and the population. You say it is there is a big uh, gutter, uh, a divide that is there. And uh, you said something similar, but I'm raising the issue: Is this time for a new class of elites for the people? Well, Should the people also uh, raise their new elites if they don't have confidence in those that are there now? Well, Mr. Leo, you see, history has it that one of our elites, when asked by President Ahijo, "What can I do for your people?" he said, "Give them prisons." <laughs> And they constructed one big one in his village. <laughs> constructed BMM all over our place. <laughs> and the same history has it again that another any close to President Bia, when President Bia asked him, what can I do for your people? Shut down the internet. <laughs> Shut down the internet. <laughs> and they were out to, to say proudly that they advised the president to shut down the internet. Another one, when they asked him, what should I do? I said, send them the B. <laughs> Please. You see, you can understand what, what these men of God are saying. Uh, these elites are the cause of this situation in which we find ourselves. Because if they had done their jobs correctly, they would have, they would have existed no discontent in the population. But when they go up there, they say, after all, nobody sent me there. I was just, I was just picked out by the powers that be. And they tend to work for their own personal stomachs and their welfare of the family. Any of you who goes to any of them for help, if you are looking for money, sorry, sir, you won't get anything. If you want accommodation, please oh, go look for the nearest hotel, the cheapest hotel you can find. If it is a job you are looking for, he will tell you politely, um, 
go to Ministry of uh, Public Service. I don't employ people. Whereas we all know that they can influence situations. By virtue of their positions, a simple phone call to a director general can move mountains. They will reserve that for their family members. So I think that uh, the question you are asking is a very simple one. You want to reconcile this type of people? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it looks like you want to take somebody who is destined for hell to send to heaven. <laughs> I don't see I don't see it possible. Wait. What is going to happen is that the population is already substituting them. Because look at the thing clearly now. They are in the background. What well, I said they have been vomited. He said they have been declared personal non grata. In fact, many cannot go to their villages. <laughs> so <laughs> you see? The population has sidelined them and has looked for its own elites. In most cases, even they substitute and take elites from the diaspora. When you hear total lockdown, it is obeyed. Why would the minister here order not order that people should not respect the lockdown? But you don't you don't lock down, they will come and burn their No, shop. the minister here order. Why can he not? He is an elite. Why can he not order that people should not respect the lockdown? Because if nobody believes in him. If they burn they believe more. Uh, Mr. Look, Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo. Yes. They, the population believes more in that elite abroad. Whom they think is going to bring them change. You see? So that's why I'm saying that if this elite don't want to change, they don't want to leave hell to go to heaven, they will be substituted for other people by the population. And that is very easy. I want to thank uh, this man of God for saying that everybody should be swept off the table and new people should be put on top of the table. Because if the elites have been, if we agree that they have all been sidelined, of what good are they to us anymore? They don't serve any purpose. Please, pack your bags and leave. We need people who can work in our interest. People who have the general interest at heart. Who will speak for us and tell the people tell the government look this is what our problem is this is what we want as a solution when the the commission was sent down to go and ask the people what do you want we were in kumba and i saw images of bamenda where people said look what we want we want total autonomy <laughs> The BB elite who when they came back and said uh, they are asking for 10 state federation. And they want the, 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 10 state federation. The and the repartition of the cops are in Who asked for that? In which <laughs> meeting was he asked? <laughs> <laughs> you see? Look, look at that. See what they, they carry in front. The people spoke and it is on video. Then you go tell the people that no, um, um, look, this is what they want. They want 10 state federation. You saw, you saw. The, the the opinion sounding that came last time from the cdn does it have any any resemblance with what our elites took from ground zero to send to the president you see people should be should be serious because you can easily be contradicted by the simplest opinion sounding the simplest one Cardinal two made his open were shouting but that was true and i'm sure if another person takes the courage of going down you'll be shocked People will recommend that these ministers be sacked and sent, and sent back to their homes. Because they don't serve any purpose anymore. Okay. They should change um, or be changed. Now, this concept of the elite, of an elite, Dr. Nick, do you, need, do you think there is a need for a redefinition of who an elite is for our communities? Do you just become an elite uh, because you are appointed or because... Uh, the president thinks you are an elite and not necessarily because you are making uh you are standing out in a particular field and making the difference i think in the course of our talking uh, one of you in talking actually defined that thing called elite you broke it down it's not it's not just one mass of people i'm sure it's, it's you, it's no, you, you, you did. They, they are appointed I did. elites mm -hmm. I did. the biggest okay. problems with those appointed elites then you have elites of the civil society, yep. which is a bigger group. And in these elites of the civil society, you have some there that are politically so awake, and they will sell their grandfathers to become appointed, 
appointed elite you know because it's, it's this other basket you move from this other basket and go to the appointed side where you can have more to eat so there are some who will sell their wives and their grandparents to to to, to, to join this class so so that's a, that's a huge problem but what we are saying is with what we have as elites now we need to we we we, we, we need to it's there's only there's, there's only those principles we live by principles it is the principle of truth only the truth shall set you free it's just about loving your neighbor we are talking here about agape loving your neighbor love your neighbor as, as yourself, you yourself yeah? do unto others as you have it done unto you very very simple principles if you see that child out there it's not your biological child but it's your child that's the bottom line don't 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 go that extra mile looking only for your biological child or the one that comes from your village is wrong all children are our children that's it that's the that's how it works if i'm if i'm who i am today it's not because on Kambi people or women people made me who I am. It's people, it's other people that I don't know. It's, 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 it's God's children, you know, from left forward center, who came to my help to be to make me who I am. And what and what we are called upon to do is to do the same, you know, f for the whole nation, for any child, be the child, whether the child is tall, green, short, whether he comes from the east or the west, it has, it doesn't matter. Just be a human being according to God's precepts, period, and it will be done. So these other, these other elites, as long as they are not aligned to these principles, nothing can work. And I was going to say that, just, just one thing that Barrister said, he was saying that uh, our people respect the elites from, from, from the diaspora. The, 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 again, this definition, the elites of the diaspora don't fall in one category. You know, they're, they're, they're the ones who are doing gari, and um, and uh, and when people stay at home on Mondays, it's not because they don't want to work. It's not out of respect. It's out of fear of Gary. So and uh, <laughs> you know, and all of them work with the spirit of Odeshi. And Odeshi is the spirit of death. And um, it's the fear factor that comes in really. And until they work with the spirit of God, they can never earn real respect. It doesn't matter what you're looking for your people. You must look for it under the banner and spirit of God. If it's working with the spirit of Odeshi, it's not good, whatever it is. It could be as beautiful as diamonds. It's not good as long as you try to get it with the spirit of Odeshi. Okay. Uh, Mo writing from uh, Yaoundi says, uh, Yes, the elites can make an impactful change to terminate the current crisis in the Northwest and Southwest uh, if they decide to. But they hesitate because some of them are feeding fat from the crisis most of them are dishonest okay we'll look at uh, that factor whether uh, it's also the factor of uh, th that they're making gains on both sides that is why they they, they don't want this thing to end that should be a reaction but let me take some some messages uh, good evening mr Liu. the issue of change in cameroon is a nightmare and even the issue of elites there are therefore the political interest not for the community elites are a disgrace emil is writing from yaoundé good evening to you emil good evening mr Liu. thank you people for educating cameroonians our anglophone elites in government are for their personal interests so let's make known that they are there for the people <coughs> I am Mr. Hafai Herbert Chita. Thank you. Uh, you're writing from Douala here. Yeah, good evening to you. Good evening in the house. Mr. Liu, I really like your program. Courage to the CPDM man. Let the CPDM member <laughs> 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 learn from him. My name is uh, Brother Acho Amana, uh, writing from Kumba. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panelists. Uh, these elites are there for their selfish interests. Like one of the men of God said, we need an overhauling. Elites should learn to tell the truth. Daisy, writing from uh, Cape Town also. Uh, please, Mr. Liu, good evening. I wish you helped me with the phone number of the pastor in Red Valentine from Bamenda. Those two men of God in the studio should start praying for this country. Okay, they will do that. Mr. Liu... <coughs> Uh, make barrister to understand that the elites can't go to their villages not because the villagers don't want to see them but because a few who are carrying guns no but he said it here yeah. and whose ideology doesn't tie with that of the elites don't want to see them as a villager you are not asked to respect ghost town <laughs> but you are forced to 
<laughs> if you disobey, <laughs> you, you are targeted. <laughs> okay, this is Danga writing from Bomenda. Good evening from you there. Uh, good evening, Davidson from Oyuka. Take note that on the 30th of uh, 1961, French gendarmes entered southern Cameroon that had no army. What did they expect? Okay, Fuman Conference selfishness not ruled out. Okay, Davidson from Oyuka. Good evening to you. Good evening uh, to everyone in the studio. Love the program. God bless you all. Just to add to your wonderful contributions, I think the first step to building this country will only be when these elites will allow godliness to dominate their hearts. Apart from that, there can be no credibility in their services because the devil who has an upper hand in their hearts has nothing good to offer. John 10.10. 10. Apostle Dennis is writing from Kribi. Uh, good evening to you, Apostle. Uh, thanks much. Uh, is going well. Tell Pastor Buike that we would love to carry other programs with him. We love his words. Talking about selfish discipline, self-discipline, which level of discipline from elites can elites bring to settle out this crisis? If elites have taken their offices for personal stomach, which is what we are seeing in the nation now, Okay, how do we dethrone them or change the government apart from gunshot and the rest? Okay, um, <laughs> this one is writing from Bamenda. They say, love the words from the CPD man. Okay, <laughs> it's Dr. Nick. <laughs> Good evening to you all out there. I love your program, but I have a question to ask. Please, why is it can... No, 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 no. Don't ask us about another TV now. Mm. Every TV has their 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 editorial policy. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Alphonse writing from Boya. Please, we don't need the elite to repent. We need them to dismiss and imprison. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Prem. Uh, the elites need to come for cleansing. Bayanak Bokoy Joseph writing from Douala. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu. I do not think the panel understand the topic of the day. It's Daniel writing from Kumba. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Kumba. I'm really enjoying the program. Please, can Dr. Nick repeat what he just said about the six basic principles in life, if I got it correctly? I'm Tim Bise writing from uh, Duwala. Good evening, Mr. Kum, and to you all in the house. Thanks for your wonderful program. It educates us over here so much, but as for for what we call elites, they have all failed us because those who are representing us are the are there for their personal interest in and stomach. And like what is happening now in the southwest and northwest, uh, they are so called elites cannot defend their people. Mohammed and friends writing from Morocco in Casablanca. If I read the messages, we may not continue the program. Yes, okay, just coming. Uh, the truth is that. There are many who are benefiting from the whole the, from this uh, uh, struggle, mm -hmm. and that's why it cannot end. Mm -hmm. They you are know, not working for it to end. Yeah, they are, and they are not ready for it to end. They mm -hmm. are not contributing for it to end, just because of the benefits they are drawing from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just like any other thing. If you're doing something and it's profitable, you will continue to do it. The motivation to do it will be there. They, and the truth is that, look, just think of the soldiers who are at the forefront. They have the allowances entering every day or every week or every month. And most of them may not be touching even their salaries. So it's advantageous for them. If it ends, it means they will go back and they will be taking their salaries and spending them. But as long as they are at the forefront, though it's, they are risking their lives, but because of the benefits, they will want to stay there. As a soldier, do you have? As a there. soldier, do you have? Do you have? Uh, yeah, they, 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 he was talking about. Uh, we are talking about elite. It's okay, not an elite. but somehow, if the soldier know, has no choice, oh, when they say jump into that, who oh, and fight, you first are of going. all, those who, those yes. who are concerned with what is happening on ground, mm -hmm. to an extent, the elites are the ones in charge. You, you, uh, the, uh, Barrister said one said they should send soldiers. So who was talking? It should be the elites, and most often. There are some of these elites who come with proposals to the government. Mm. I can do this to make sure this thing stops, and they will, they will give them. They will give the proposal, and what will certainly 
follow will be a pay, a, an envelope. If you can make sure this thing works, we are we are behind you. And some somehow they collect huge sums of money, and they don't deliver. So they want this thing to continue because they have some benefits that they are drawing from it. If it was not beneficial, just think about it. When this thing started, there were some people who were appointed ministers just because of this problem. Because somehow they came up and showed how bravery they were and some the, and the powers that be had to appoint them. Look at the appointment of of, uh, of of some ministers, it was as a result of the whole of these things. Yes. But so if they were uh, appointed you as you a result talk, of this, talk as if the benefits are coming only from one side. Are you saying that in the separatist camp, people are not making benefits? They are making benefits. Imagine somebody who was a bike rider who has suddenly become a general. Do you think <laughs> he should go back to his bike riding? So of course, he will stay as general until something happens to him, or he survives it. You know, mm -hmm. but. This thing is benefiting the two sides. Mm. It's not benefiting the population. Yeah, because my question is, uh, how do we understand that people will be working for uh, this stuff not to end when we know that uh, millions are suffering in uh, the southwest and northwest region? Well, uh, and we know that both sides, all the elites on both sides, says we will die for you. They are fighting for the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I know everyone say, if you want to prove your love to the people, mm -hmm. the first thing you should do, we, we need to stop fighting. Mm -hmm. When you stop fighting, because they, they always say when the cows, they are fighting the grass, suffer. The people that they, they, they have nothing to do with it. Because in this crisis, I've, I've seen so many things. Little babies, they just go like that. If we go back behind to see the things that have happened, you will see that there's a deep, we have too much pain in our heart. And that's why I'm saying that there is a need for a change of attitude. Because first, we need to have that mindset that, okay, we, we, we admit to our mistakes and we forgive anyone in the crisis, no matter what you have done, whatsoever you have done. And then we should look for a solution. And looking onto a solution, we must now come before the Lord and say, okay, no matter whatsoever I've done, I've repented, I'm coming to embrace back my people. If they like, they kill me, they kill me. I'm coming for them. That's how somebody that has repented, he, he behaves. You accept the people and you come, you embrace them, you forget about all these things and all the position whatsoever. We need to change our attitude. Because we can argue, yes, yeah, say this person did this, did this. We'll, if we point our mistakes, how long we, we will continue pointing mistakes? We keep on pointing their mistakes, everyone's mistakes, and then we don't look for a solution. Now is not the time to point for mistakes. It's the time for look, looking on to a solution. Mm. The men of God, they have the a solution? Yeah, we have a solution. A solution that will be re released. And uh, that is why we are calling uh, upon the... Uh, the, everyone, all the both sides, they should try to calm down because we have a solution at hand. And God is saying that if my people as, will repent, as, as the solution be made public, have you proposed to the both sides that this is the solution? No, actually, it's not a matter of proposal. The Bible says that you should repent. If you you accept that word of repentance, you just need to keep calm. Don't create destruction, and then you just calm calmly. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody calmly. Don't think about your position because if you are thinking about your position, your position can kill you before your time. Mm. Before okay. before the time that you're supposed to die. Okay. Um <laughs> senior barrister, I want us to go practical. <laughs> we are talking about the the political administrative elites of the southwest and northwest region. You are one. Dr. Nick here is one. There are traditional authorities are there. Can we are talking of repentance? Can they if they can <laughs> can they not go down all of you people? Go down to Kumba, go down and all the chiefs, everybody say you are our children, you want to kill us here, you kill us. Or if they go to, to Yaoundé, that Paul Bear you must receive us if you don't want to let us keep. This is they have they have chopped now for long. Is this also the time to take the, the bullet? 
Mr. Liu, mm -hmm. um, not long ago, the Minister of uh, Defense came visiting Kumba. Douala. Mm -hmm. Went to the hospital, to the military hospital, to see the victims of war, of a uh, of a uh, war, mm -hmm. who were wounded in our region. And uh, what came out of that visit was very shocking. The wounded soldiers were complaining that they have not been receiving their allowances. Where are their allowances? Somebody is chopping it in your own day. Your question is, can those elites, mm -hmm. who are chopping those allowances due to the wounded soldiers, can they allow that war to end? How many times have we seen pictures of skyscrapers in America or in Yaoundé being constructed by our own elites? How many times? How many times have we seen our own brothers who are top-ranking military officer, officers change their lifestyle when they are given some appointments and sent to certain places to handle that crisis? We saw the picture of one of the generals who was killed in the Northwest. He was living in a four-star hotel. General in the Northwest? No, I mean a separatist general. He was okay. living in a four-star hotel. Ah, you mean in Bafut, uh, the Saddle Ranch here? Or Thank Saddle you. Here, something Thank like you. That. So, tell me, who of those guys will want the situation to change? <laughs> you, you want something practical? There is a general in the... He was supposed to be the bush, as people say. <laughs> he, is living, he was living in a four-star hotel. <laughs> right, you want to tell me that that type of person will accept that the war should end so that he should go back to his <laughs> one apartment in the room <laughs> no i don't think i don't think uh, it's possible look at of recent we had kidnappings the phone of a uh, so mm -hmm. so when you kidnap the style of big people without telling us what you took behind so we should Stop the kidnapping, the war, so that you don't have the opportunity to make fast cash again. No, you see, this thing is going to. If we are going to rely on the elites, I'm sorry that the crisis is likely to drag on for some time again because there has been a war economy that has been put in place. You see, look, there are things that people don't see. Go to the cocoa and coffee producing areas and the rice producing areas in Aquaya. Who is now selling the rice? Who is selling the coffee? Who is selling the cocoa? The owners? <laughs> you must be dreaming. <laughs> you must be dreaming. Tell me which. I don't know who is selling. Uh -uh. The warlords have taken it over. You, the owner, they sell and give you what they want to give you. They sell it and give you what they want to give you. You think the coffee gets rotten in the bush? No, one day. They harvest everything. It doesn't get rotten. So there is a war economy that has been put in place. Companies are not working. But people are not starving. No. They are not starving. Food is... Eh, things, goods and services are moving around. How are they moving around? There are people in charge of sustaining the war economy. They say, uh, okay... No brasserie drinks should cross. Does it mean people in our era don't drink bimbo? Who say? People have or organized for a steady supply of drinks to be coming from Nigeria. And that money goes into whose pocket? The war economy. You see, so it will be difficult for that war to end if we are relying on elites. That is why many people say it is nice for inter uh, international intervention because if you look at it, the side of the government, many ministers are making hey, why sun is shining, and they wouldn't want it to stop. Whenever money comes, they say, Mr. President, Mr. President, there is this thing that needs to be done. They dish money, Mr. Leo. Um, after the Kumba hospital was burnt, if you remember very well, the president of the republic bought said gave monies that were used to buy equipment for Kumba General Hospital, 
Do you remember that as they were carrying those equipment from the boy from Boya to Kuba? Some uh, was it scanners so there too that got missing that disappeared. They disappeared away from between Boya and Kuba. And <laughs> no. see, today we don't have any news of the origin of those the whereabouts of those scanners. No, I'm sure I'm sure we are uh, we are going to investigate what you're saying here tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you well. Yeah, I thought that you must have had the, the result by now. No. If you are still investigating, then please do fast. <laughs> because I want to know what happened to the equipment that the president gave money. It was bought. They were carrying from Boya mm -hmm. to Kumba. Okay. Um, scanners disappeared. Okay, uh, the scanners uh, disappeared. Let me take this one. Say, say good evening. Mr. Kum, the elites uh, in quotes have nothing to offer. They are there to protect their offices and they can only defend their boss, the Bible says, evil prevail where good men do nothing. Thanks, uh, Prince Williams, writing from Baron Bikang in uh, Kumba. <coughs> Ngu Paul Ngong, writing from Kumba too. Hey, Mr. Leo, I'm Ngu Paul Ngong from I Akale Street, Kumba. The gap between the rich and the poor is too big. That's why it's difficult to have power change hand. No matter how long the crisis may last, they don't care because they don't feel the pains. Please, men of God, go on the streets and protest. Don't only talk and pray. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. What the barrister is talking is true. Babila is writing from uh, Kumba. Uh, oops. French. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Tell the pastors that Rosicrucians do not repent to their God. Thank you. They have their own God to Grandmaster. Mr. Nembo is writing from Mutengene. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love the program, but I'm pleading can this program be broadcast on CRT? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie is writing from uh, from from Bermenda. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to you all in the house. Your program is fan your program is fantastic. Thank you very much, Esther. From Kumba. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The elites we have don't know what is called repentance. They value positions and milk than to serve their people. Larry is writing from uh, Yaounde. Uh, and Manel in Bermuda, if the Assembly of uh, the Republic of Cameroon is unable to talk an, uh, on anglophone crisis, who are the corrupt elites who only know the idea of scratch my back before I can scratch uh, yours? Good evening to you. Just to say those elites are just there for their selfish interest and that of their family. They even go ahead to dupe the common man, promising them for for job opportunities, we pray God should judge them one after the other. Eno is writing from Bermuda. Good evening, Mr. Leo. If elites were to swear oath in the shrine, they would have rep represented us. <laughs> <laughs> Fernandez is writing from uh, is writing there from uh, Bermuda. Doctor Nick Nguanyam. Uh, how do we uh, get things around how do we get the elites and the the elites in Cameroon the guys who are out of the country to actually take into account the plight of the people can they force things around is it time for them to surpass a party uh, uh, discipline or uh, surpass maybe just like for the men of God just sitting and praying should the traditional rulers also come out everybody Oh, we keep praying and committing everything to God. Prayer is good. But pray as if everything depends on prayer. Work as if everything depends on work. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, then you get a result. If you if you if you spend you can spend donkey years praying and if you're not doing anything about it physically, working, nothing will change. Because in the in the course of the prayer God, God will bring you wisdom and so on to get up and do it. Yeah, God gives you the wisdom, the keys that you use to, to, to do it. And most of the time when I speak so boldly on television, right. it's because I pray about it. And what God puts in my, in my heart, it might be wrong or it might be, be, be true, I don't know. It depends on you. But I believe that God gives me what to say and I say it clean and clear. That's why I speak. You know, someone will ask, who is your godfather? God is my godfather. Now... 
it's very very important for us to to realize some 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 things uh, a couple of people have said you know as far as this 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 elites are concerned you can't expect much out of them you know it will be very difficult for them to repent because you have to understand what what the light is and what the darkness is so and you have to know how to move to the light moving to the light means you lose out on a lot of uh, material benefits and ego and many of those things and uh, so it's just about principles like we've said before it doesn't matter what you have as degrees position or, or, or whatever those things only account for 25 percent of your success and your success def de depends 75 percent on your character and attitude so if you're going to take someone it doesn't matter who he is and he lacks character and attitude forget it if you cannot get that character and attitude corrected according to kingdom principles of God it's a total waste of time you're building you're building uh, you, you, it's, it's, it's a white elephant I would say you are building you're building your castles on sandy soil you might think that you're making it but before you know it it goes like that it goes like that and people watch me people I don't know on which side you belong but if you're feeding on the blood of Cameroonians the blood of children and the blood of others it might you might think you're getting away with it but when it comes to payback time you will regret you were ever born you will regret you were ever born and therefore we are going to enter another season Cameroon is going to change and it's going to change right before your eyes and very quickly you won't even realize it and when that change comes the elites you are seeing now, they will be gone. You will not see them again. You will not. You know, when the Israelites were crossing from Egypt, uh, crossing the, 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 the Nile on dry land, when they got on the other side, they worshipped God. Because when they turned back and saw, you know, they had been caught between the Nile and then the soldiers. And God opened a path for them when they crossed. And Moses told them, these people you see, you never see them again. And that was it. It was gone. That's what is going to happen. It's going to flip. It's going to be like a rapture. It's just going to flip like that, and you will, will wonder what happened. This rottenness you are seeing is going to end. Is that a prophecy? It's a prophecy. I'm telling you how God is going to do it. Don't ask me how He will do it, but it there will are happen. Many men of God on this planet. Uh, it's, it's not about men of God. I'm. A, I'm <laughs> I talk direct to my God. <laughs> I, it's not a man of God who told me. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm talking about my own personal relationship with my God, and that's how it's going to be. When it comes to we, we would have loved it that this current um, early should change. But you cannot bend an old tree. Mm -hmm. So, no, no, no. See, we are not going to spend time trying to bend old trees when there are a young generation coming and have no future. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is what is going to happen. We have to be more practical. What are you doing to create 2 million jobs for youth in 2 years? It's practical things. What are you doing to create me two million jobs for youth in two years? It's not about talking and wearing a coat. What are you doing to solve the problems of the people? Yes, and because there are some things that they need, they need, they need to restructure them, put them in the yeah, right. Father, I, 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 Pastor, I heard you, but we would, they will be sent home to go and be repenting home. <laughs> <laughs> all right no don't wait there be eating and sucking <laughs> because since he that is sucking this do you know what it means to hit ro rock bottom repentance come when you are at rock bottom as long as you have your nipples on the your lips on the nipple you you, you can repent <laughs> repentance <laughs> only comes when you when you are down with your back on the to the wall that's what we want no no uh, back back to the wall means you will go home sit and sit there and then think when jonah was in the in the belly of the well that's when he got wisdom you get what i'm saying what about apostle paul apostle paul when apostle paul was hit by the light he got wisdom mm -hmm. are you getting one so it, they must it's come possible they can do that no we're not waiting for that they should go and be getting the you understand we don't need it they will just pack and go <laughs> and then the nation will flip over and that's what's going to happen okay oh somebody asked that she just number one like work number two like work that's well done number three have be honest number four self-discipline number five pray number six respect the um, environment and when you talk about that prayer 
what is prayer prayer means you must be in connection with god mm -hmm. and you cannot be in connection with with somebody that you you cannot be in a relationship with somebody that you don't know and what is, and how do you know god god is not one huge human being no god is truth god is love god is god is um spirit mm -hmm. god is soul god is um infinite intelligence wisdom the total wisdom of the earth is god god is principle god is the principle god he doesn't he doesn't waver like uh, like like our political parties no god is like this thank you okay uh doctor <laughs> <laughs> this one says uh doctor understands much about cameroon and give just what it takes we can't be talking about issues that uh had never existed so the only way to go is to accept that we have all failed and review our educational system changing it from education of remembering to that of transformation and creativity mm -hmm. yeah. the change from christianity to of suffering on earth to enjoy in heaven so as uh, so as to identify ourselves as god carrying human nature and start uh, bringing our value from the natural endowment that he has given humanity to to have control over and stop all this nonsense of blame game let love live lead Good evening, Doc, and uh, the panelist uh, Amazi is writing from South Africa. Okay, uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. What Barista is saying about cocoa is true. That is why those set amber drove all the family case <laughs> so that they own their farms. I love the program. Elvis from Limbe. Mr. Leo, please ask your panelists about the state of Cameroon if there can be any division of uh, their country. Okay, um, it's the next day, next topic good evening mr liu i'm tony yayo from kumba it's only the government can stop this crisis because it is in their hands okay g lucas says, uh, good evening elitism has failed let those who call themselves elite class drop that and follow populism the pop the populists now know what is right too the successful nations with high democratic values depend on the fundamental rules in a nation. We are where we are today because religion is highly being mixed with the state institutions. The Bible says whatever to agree, God makes it happen. Okay, senior barrister, I like your courage each time you are exposing some CPDM elite in Yaoundé. I am afraid, please, God secure his life for us, bro. Acho Amana. Amen. <laughs> Okay, good evening, Mr. Leo Babila, writing from Limba. I want to know if all the uniforms officers are CPDM. Okay, um, I don't know. Good evening to you all in the studio. Our elites have sold their conscience to the regime, and as such, can't say or do anything contrary to what the regime wants. It's Balak writing from uh, Limba. Uh, what's the way forward for our elites, especially the church? Um, I am a pastor mm -hmm. and I don't believe that everything needs to be solved only by prayers. Okay. I believe in action. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe in people standing out. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in passivity. Mm -hmm. If we pray and we can pray for 100 years, mm -hmm. if we do nothing, nothing will be done. Mm -hmm. Prayer is important. Prayer moves God. And God sometimes People will say, I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting upon the Lord. Meanwhile, God is waiting for them. Mm -hmm. You see, so I believe in action. And the men of God must be truthful. Mm -hmm. We've seen men of God who go along with the politicians simply because of the fat offerings that are given to them. We've seen many men of God who have sold their uh, birthright mm -hmm. too to these politicians because in some of these in most of these churches have these politicians at the for at the, at the at the forefront at the at the front seats most of them who are in their own day who we know they are promoting what's happening in these two regions some of them belong to churches and they sit at the front seats and they, they are also part of the congregation and i wonder what those pastors should be talking to them so if we want change it must be in every uh, domain it must be in every area so if w what i can say is that the men of god should pray and we should speak the truth to the powers that be because only the truth can heal 
uh, if we if somebody says Cameroon is not cursed, I'll tell that person that he's wrong. Cameroon is cursed. Cameroon needs deliverance. Mm -hmm. Because every time we spew blood, when that blood flows on the ground, the Bible says it speaks curses like the blood of Abel. And when mm -hmm. Abel was killed, Thank the you. blood of Abel was speaking curses on the ground mm -hmm. and he was crying out to God. So count the number of uh, people who have been killed in these two regions. It shows that our land has been debted. This land needs cleansing. cleansing. And it has to start with the, the, from the top. Our president must be open enough to kind of start something like even what happened in South Africa, truth and reconciliation, something. We, we must think of that. We must think of men of God coming and praying. We must think of this nation ex having something which has to do with repentance, like he was saying. If that if we want to see change, it must start like that. Because if the blood that has been spilled in Cameroon uh, uh, and is continued being spilled, I tell you, our country is cursed. Okay. And we need, and this country needs deliverance. We don't need grand grandmasters to be coming in like we've heard before. We need people of God to rise, ask for forgiveness, repent and then see how we build this nation okay yes uh certainly you have a word for for the nation for cameroonians for especially for the elite and to your uh, uh, your, your colleagues um men of god yeah i have a word and the first my word to the nation is that first we should create a heart of repentance a, co a forgiven heart a heart that you feel for someone you feel like if these children they were my own how would i behave to them if this father was my own how would i be behave to are you getting me and now we should reconcile just we should not be grabbed because now we are being frightened our hearts people are moving and they are being frightened everywhere and they, we need to create a free heart have a free heart and a good relationship and for pastors now we have a a great move and god have released released a solution and that's why we are calling for repentance god have released a solution that's why we created god liberation outreach movement to carry it forward to see that we call upon the administrators and anyone that is holding a position in our nation or in any place in our land let that person come down knee down we lay hands on him and we free him from any <laughs> captivity because when you are under a curse you need a hand of a man of god that is genuine and we believe that the authority in Luke 10, 19 that have been given on to us about principality and power, we can now free every man and make peace in our nation and everybody go jumping around and celebrating. So I'm calling upon all the pastors that there is a move. And if you are somewhere hearing us, watching us, just prepare, try to connect to us. Uh, we will join together and free this nation. Because the nation is cursed, and we must heal the land. God, our God, must heal the land, and is ready to heal the land because there is a solution. There is already a solution for this situation. Even the United Nations, all the foreign body cannot have a, the solution that we are having. There is a solution, but first to apply that solution, there must be repentance. Okay, there must be repentance. Uh, yes, Mr. Leo, your topic concerns. Uh, Southern Cameroon elites, mm -hmm. but uh, the the crisis in Cameroon could affects the whole nation. Nation, yeah. So I think it would be uh, interesting for the elites of the Francophone regions to be uh, informed, to be well informed of what is happening. You just, you got some uh, messages that came in people mm -hmm. from the ground. They were telling you what senior Basa is saying is true. Mm -hmm. Many people don't know the truth. There are many francophones who who want to know the truth. Please, men of God, if you have the opportunity, tell them. Let them know what is actually happening. You see, I don't like a situation where some of us sit behind and accuse people generally. 
No, it is a matter of information. When you inform them, they will also take informed decisions. They will have informed opinions. So I think we should make an effort to inform our francophone brothers because anglophone edits alone cannot turn things around. We should try to implicate the francophones, let them understand that solving the anglophone crisis is in the interest of every Cameroonian because that crisis is affecting everybody. Almost every family is losing somebody. You don't need to be a, on ground zero. Soldiers who died there don't live there. They come from far and wide. Families suffer. Widows are created every day because soldiers live to go serve the nation. Please, when Pamo collapses, when CDC collapses, it is the entire nation that suffers. Jikam cries. Jikam cries. Em unemployment rises. The other day, CDC workers were on strike. So I think that we should put everybody on, on deck to make sure that this thing is turned around. Because only Anglophone edits cannot do it. And those people up there, at times we sit here and say they have taken the wrong decision. We let us make sure that the people who are also advising them get the right information so that they will find it ridiculous. When they ask them, what can we do for your people? You say, we'll give them prison. <laughs> they will find it ridiculous because today, what you say inside is a closed room will soon be on internet because, I mean, even the smallest primary school child has a phone. Okay. Uh, we want to thank you for coming. Fortunately, we have to end here. Uh, Dr. Nick, thank you for accepting to be part of this edition of the program. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my parting words would be that there's nothing, all that we've been saying, there's nothing that you can do without truth and love. It will not work. If you are lying, you can lie for as long as you want. It will not work. It will collapse. Then the other thing that I want to share with us is that what we need now is not... Um, political parties fighting or whatever has failed us you know if you if you replace even the cpdm now with the mrc or with the sdf nothing will change because there's something that is fundamentally wrong that we must correct so changing a political party cpdm to mrc to what or even barista's party no Barista, no no with me everything will change don't don't go that way no no i what? have the solution to create jobs leave that one the, 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 i mean that <laughs> three, <the> 350 <laughs> of you no no no, no. <laughs> i have the solution sir you want us to talk about it i will give you all right okay. i have then to end corruption to create employment from our own means oh that's wonderful no, we have all that. let's clap for you clap, <laughs> yes, <I laughs> thank, thank you <laughs> thank you very much now, now barista is talking because all this while what we are doing in cameroon we are beating around the bush okay until you stop importing rice until you Correct. stop importing fish if for, for every pound of rice that you import is a pound of foolishness on your part so we need to be very clear on what we do if you think that you are doing the right thing create two million jobs for youth in two in, in every two years then you would have won by the time you can create those two million jobs you would have solved most of the problems okay uh we also want to say thank you to you uh man of god thank you it's always a joyful thing to come into this uh, studio and talk things which are important and which are geared towards nation building and i just want to say that those who are actually carrying weapons uh, who are fighting should value human life human life is sacred when you kill somebody you are brought curses upon yourself in fact there's no reason to kill that's why this war is senseless and we want it to really end so that those who are there can enjoy peace and tranquility. Okay. Uh, Senior Barista, thank you for coming. Thank you, Pastor. I'm a Muslim and the Quran says, he overtakes away human life, calls on himself the curse of God and of all mankind. So I think your, po your point is taken home. Okay. I only like that when you are talking about men of God, include the other de denominations. Don't limit it to pastors because Imams are as important and bishops as well. <laughs> okay, I'll end with you. Uh, Pastor, you said you want to make prayer for is it for the nation or for us here? Yeah. <laughs> huh? for, ev for everyone in okay. this nation. We are all Cameroonians okay. and we are in this nation. Let's pray. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we declare that everything we have spoken here, let God edit it 
and give the right results that we give solutions to us in jesus name Amen. we pray that let it touch the heart of everyone uh, sitting in this nation father we pray that let the power of darkness be broken let the connection of the devil be shattered down because it is it, it is the hand of the devil that is operating over this station therefore we break that hand in jesus name mm. we declare liberation freedom in the name of jesus christ Amen. any power of darkness controlling anyone controlling even pastors uh, bishops whosoever father we declare let that hand be broken in jesus name Amen. we declare peace and love in jesus name Amen. and so shall it be as we are prayed in jesus name we pray amen amen long live our lives and camera okay we also want to thank our production team desmond uh eli christian and bertrand we want to thank you all who took time off to follow the program stay blessed bye-bye